Welcome back to this very special edition of River City Live where we explore the history and the haunting of Jacksonville. I'm in front of a building that actually once was the old St. Luke's Hospital. More on that later on in the show, but it currently serves as the Jacksonville Historical Society. We're going inside to learn some more about the history of this great city, including a little segment where you'll hear about the very strange uh, activities of some society women in our history. Come on in. So I don't think you can talk about haunted Jacksonville without the history element and whether or not you believe in things like a haunted building or a home. It, regardless of that, there is some history that will make your your hair stand on end when you think about it. So take us through the Jacksonville history. Let's start 1822. Okay, Jacksonville is founded. It's founded by a man named Isaiah Hart, who actually was living up along the St. Mary's River. He and his family knew this area intimately. They had been riding down here, exploring the area, uh, involved with Seminole Indians on and off for years. So uh, he, he had seen the area. He knew that narrow crossing on the St. John's River was active with people uh, moving towards St. Augustine, going across St. Augustine. And uh, he came down and thought, great place to start a town. And indeed he did. He gave part of his property. He convinced a neighbor, John Brady, to give part of his property. And they carved out the original streets of our town. Uh, and those street names remain the same today. You find that in these years, you know, people really believed in the old call. They, uh, some people did. They believed in the use of Ouija boards. This was fascinating. In Jacksonville. Oh yeah, in the Jacksonville area. I mean, you had, I mean, the two noted people I can think of in North Florida history would be um, Henry Flagler's second wife. And uh, she relied heavily. In fact, she became addicted to Ouija boards. There was the case with Harriet Beecher Stowe she had ensconced her son in an experimental plantation in what we would identify eventually as Orange Park. And, uh, and while there, he would eventually just sort of leave. It did not go well. And she did not hear from him and did not hear from him. He was never heard from again. And she would regularly communicate with him best she could with a Ouija board. I want to ask you, how if somebody watching this right now wanted to get their get get their hands on some of these documents and really learn some more about this history. What does the historical society offer? Is you're you're allowed to use this research for free. Uh, you simply contact us, let let us know the Jacksonville Historical Society, tell us what you want to research and We'll set up appointments. It's best to set up appointments. Mm -hmm. We do have walk-ins from time to time. We are happy to work with them. That is part of our mission. The most important part of our mission is saving these treasures of city history, but what good is it to save them if you do not make them available to the public? And that we do. Later in the show, more on this building as it once was, the original St. Luke's Hospital. And is there a connection to its next door neighbor, which was once the Florida Casket Company? Find out. More to come on River City Live. Coming up.